Well fed sweet. Well what Chad now? <laughs> we went ahead again. Caught bait. I don't know what Tad's talking about. So we're gonna head offshore a little bit. We've got Chad's daughter Cameron on the boat and her friend Summer. And we're gonna go see what we can do. Well folks, I wanted to do this video and talk a little bit about um, seasickness. I kind of cursed us uh, a couple weeks ago where I would mentioned that to Chad that we hadn't had anybody on the boat that got, had gotten sick. And I think it was that following week we had somebody that, that got a little sick. And then we had my grandson, which he's been with us many times in the bay in rougher rougher circumstances and never had a problem and it was very calm as you can see in this video coming up that um he just he just did not feel well he got sick and i felt horrible and and um you know we we put bonine we gave him bonine and he was he was better after that but he still was kind of lethargic and as you see in the opening where he was just leaning down and he was just staring at the gunnel of the boat and that's not good when you're doing that because you lose all sense of, of where you're at and what's going on and plus with him, he slept on the way out and that happened to uh, Chad's daughter Cameron and her friend Summer, same thing. They went out with us, Cameron's fished with us many times out in the bay and never had an issue and she ended up not feeling well at all and she pretty much sat up front or sat in our seats the the whole time we were out there so unfortunately you know it does happen to people and uh, i'm fortunate enough to where i don't get seasick the only time i've ever gotten seasick was my fault because i drank too much and i was on a uh the hubbard's 36 hour trip and that was a day i'll never forget and i always told myself from that point on I'm not going to drink on the boat. And if I have one beer, that's a lot for me. So I typically don't even bring anything on the boat. So there's ways of preventing seasickness. There's a couple of different products out there. there of course, there's Bonine, which we gave Finn. Um, our buddy Ernie, his wife takes it. Uh, then you have Dramamine. But the problem with Dramamine is... Uh, it will make you tired it makes you lethargic and tired so it's i would not some people it doesn't but most people i've seen that have taken it have just they want all they wanted to do was sleep so that's not good uh and then you have your relief patches and then you have your relief bands and and bracelets and stuff like that so if if you get a chance you know if you, if you do get seasick you probably already found a product if you have not then i would highly recommend trying different things until you find something that's right for you i'm not recommending a certain product or anything you've just got to have something that's right for you uh so you know try them out see what's what works best for you some people swear by the patches behind the ear or the relief bands some people swear by dramamine that because they don't get they don't get um, tired some people swear by bonine which i know my buddy ernie does so there's a lot of different ways of getting rid or stopping seasickness before it ever happens and if you are out there and you start to get seasick i highly recommend if you can bring some ginger ale because that helps tremendously and then also uh, ginger chews they also work they're they don't taste the prettiest but they work so if you're out there and you happen to get seasick and you don't have anything else on the boat, I highly recommend at least bringing a couple of cans of ginger ale. And then one of the best things that you can do is look out off into the horizon. And if there's clouds, always watch the clouds and the horizon. That's what we did with my grandson. And he started to feel a lot better after we gave him the bonine and then made him concentrate on the horizon. So if you start feeling a little, a little queasy, look off into the horizon and pay attention to the clouds if there's clouds or really pay attention to the horizon because that will help you quite a bit so i just wanted to do this quick video which got some fishing involved uh, i had to merge two videos into one because it just we weren't out there for a very long period of time unfortunately but you know it, it happens and we learned from it and that's why i wanted to do this video so if you're prone to seasickness and if you haven't coming up with a remedy yet maybe some of these things that we've shown will help you and you can give them a try so let's get back to the fishing and see if we catch any fish i think we do come on
come on, it's not even bending that rod. like a Margate the way it's mm -hmm. striped. Uh oh, Summer. Cameron's up. Well, she landed. She'll be up. Real nice that hog. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I want to catch it with that. No. <laughs> you gotta catch it to get a. You gotta with catch it. it to get a picture with it. I ain't trying to throw up. It's you feeling pain. bad? Well, I was until I ate. I'm better now. Oh, that's good. Ooh, look at that hog! Get out in the sun for me. Been. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Folks, I want to show you this new product that we're going to be an affiliate for them and the name of the company is sword s-o-r-d we have their fillet knife and we have their serrated knife and i've been using this serrated knife and i've used the fillet knife which i'll have chad demonstrate later today but this thing for the bait cutter is unbelievable the serrated knife is the best way to go with the bait cutter so i'm going to cut up some bait with our bucket bait cutter but this, these knives beautiful handle very uh it's it's very ergonomic is that what they call it er ergonomic yeah, yeah. so it fits friendly <laughs> multiple syllables oh lord so right. we're gonna go ahead and cut up some bait Just like that I've got cut bait so and I I tend to it depends on the size of the bait I have a tendency to skip 
sections like I'll skip two sections and then cut skip two sections and cut but if it's really big bait then I'll cut each section but if it's medium-sized bait like we have today I'll, I'll skip a little bit to have a little bit bigger pieces of cut bait but simply that's that's about it our bucket bait cutter is everybody raves about this thing so it does a really good job it gets you cut bait very quickly and using this serrated knife by swords it's makes it so easy Chad says he's either got a porgy or a hog he just caught that big hog so let's see what he's got hog fever it's what? Now I got hog fever. Every fish is going to be a hog. <laughs> nope, red drum. Huh. He was way off on that one. Shut right Shut up, smart Alec. We got the peanut gallery behind us. He's already quit fishing. I know this may look small folks but a lot of times you throw these back and they'll die they don't have a size limit on it so you don't have to worry about it it's a strawberry grouper somebody asked me not too long ago can you get into explaining the fish a little bit more this is what they call a strawberry grouper you can see the little red dots all over his body and um, has some three block three dots on the back of his back but there's no size limit on these because they don't get very big and if you try to throw him back even if you try to vent him he'll just float on top of the surface and float away and then let the sharks get it you do get some good meat off of these they're very very delicious 